Hi everyone, it's Pangino here, and in today's video, in collaboration with KTC, I'll be showing two of their highly anticipated Mini LED gaming monitors for 2023, which have just launched. Mini LED has been something I've been extremely interested in in my personal gaming rig for a while. Moving over to 4K 144Hz for my primary display nearly two years ago, it has come with some drawbacks. Lackluster HDR 400 support, low brightness in HDR and SDR content, so when KTC reached out offering to send over two of their highly competitive Mini LED HDR 1 1000 displays, I really wanted to check it out because it could even be a personal upgrade for me. KTC are a well established and popular brand over in China which are actually the original OEM for many NEC, Samsung and ViewSonic monitors. If you've owned a monitor from these manufacturers in the past few years, the likelihood of you having a KTC panel in that monitor is high, so there could be a chance many of you watching have already used a KTC panel. The price in which these two mini LED monitors are launching at is incredible value compared to other mini LED offerings on the market. Once you experience these technologies there is no going back. We'll also be covering some Windows HDR settings throughout this video so you can get some truly mind-blowing results on these monitors. The KTC panels featured in the monitors in this video are actually also being utilized by Sony's own InZone M9 displays, but unlike those, these actually have better features and are much more affordable. I've been lucky enough to be daily driving these monitors for a little over a month now, so I've been able to sync in the time, it's been turned on for 10 plus hours every day, used to record videos, my own personal gaming, record gaming clips and content to be utilized in future videos. These monitors have been put through their paces over the last month or so, and first of all, I would like to say I have run into absolutely no issues, no glitches, and no headaches. The M27P20 Pro features a 4K 160Hz panel with compatibility for NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync. This is a mini LED panel with 2,304 light-emitting diodes with 576 dimming zones, offering competitive black levels to OLED displays. The 4K panel comes in at 118% of the DCI-P3 color range. 118% of Adobe RGB and around 160% of sRGB. For those of you that would be more interested in the 1440p offering, thankfully the specs are nearly identical besides the resolution. It features the same 2,304 light emitting beads, 576 dimming zones, again offering you competitive color when compared to OLED without any of the need to worry about potential OLED burn-in. The T20 is a 2560 by 1440 165Hz display, also featuring compatibility with NVIDIA G-Sync and Radeon FreeSync. And just like the P20 Pro, it's Display HDR 1000 certified, offering the exact same 1000 nits peak brightness. It comes in at 106% of the DCI-P3 color range, 114% of Adobe RGB, and roughly 150% of sRGB. Comparing to the likes of the newly released AOC Aegon Pro AG274QG, priced at $860, costing 1.5 times more than the M27 T20 that offers likewise features. Both monitors feature Type-C 90 watt reverse charging, built in 2x2 watt speakers, USB 3, DisplayPort 1.4, and one of my favorite features which comes in extremely useful for me, built in KVM switch, meaning you can take control of two PCs with the exact same mouse and keyboard. As far as aesthetics go for the monitor, I couldn't be happier. There's a small subtle logo towards the bottom, there are no flashy lights or interesting design features on the front facing part of the panel, it's incredibly modest and has extremely thin side bezels, and doesn't have too much of a gamer aesthetic. For the top and rear of the monitor, we have nice cooling air ducts and vents which do a really good job of dissipating the monitor's heat upwards and away from where you're sitting. And on both the 4K and 1440p monitors we also have these subtle LED light bars which can help introduce a small amount of ambient lighting especially if placed close to a wall. And in terms of the gamer aesthetic that's pretty much as far as it goes which is a win in my book. To control the monitor we do have the popular joystick style controls where you can press and hold the joystick to turn the monitor both on and off and a quick press will bring you into the monitor's main settings. For a quick look at the settings panel available for this monitor we have nearly everything we could look for. We have our HDR settings, we can enable or disable FreeSync or G-Sync, we can set our professional calibrated modes which will limit the amount of customization we have but will enforce the factory calibrated modes if color accuracy is important to you. We have overdrive settings, multiple game assist features such as timers, on-screen crosshairs, FPS counters, a motion picture response time feature which will help minimize motion blur with instead of high-speed games but this will come with a brightness penalty. You can change the RGB lights on the back from breathing, red, green, blue or even off, local dimming, our KVM setup information, and underneath this we have our inputs. For the most part I'd recommend going through the monitor settings yourself and dialing them in in some of your favourite games. For some of the settings I've adjusted throughout my month of usage, I've upped the sharpness to 50%, overdrive modes whether you're using SDR, HDR, FreeSync, G-Sync or not, I would nearly always recommend setting the overdrive mode to middle. Raising your overdrive mode will reduce the pixel response times of the monitor, resulting in lower input latency. I would nearly in all cases recommend enabling DSC which is display, stream, 
and compression. Enabling this will ensure that we have full compatibility with HDR, 4K, 160Hz, without running into any bandwidth constraints which could come down to your cable or the display output from your GPU or console. It's worth noting that you will actually get some power saving benefits when utilizing local dimming, especially if you're playing darker games, and you'll see extremely dark black levels which could almost rival OLED. The 576 local dimming zones on this monitor are absolutely phenomenal, especially when utilizing HDR. Before I received these monitors, I was daily driving a 4K 144Hz panel, but unfortunately that was only rated for HDR 400, which was pretty much top spec less than two years ago. Upon initial impressions, it's incredible how far monitor technology has come, even when it comes to the 4K gaming space. Well, this mini LED monitor blows that out of the water completely. Even in SDR content, this is one of, if not the brightest monitor I have ever seen, which is fantastic for me because I prefer a brighter display. Not only personally, but also when I'm recording, it helps out. If you're playing a lot during the daytime or in an extremely well-lit room, brighter displays are easier to see, and in my opinion, just pop way more. Whether it's been some of the latest single-player releases that I've been playing with G-Sync and HDR enabled, or with Warzone 2 with HDR enabled, or just some older titles like one of my favorites, CSGO, which has no HDR support, this monitor has absolutely blown me away. And for that reason, even after this video, this is going to be my main display moving forward. Upon initial impressions of HDR, I was relatively impressed, until it jumped into the settings and dialed them in even further. First of all, if you are looking to do any PC gaming on these monitors with HDR and you want a true experience, the best experience you're going to get hands down is by utilizing Windows 11. The newer versions of Windows 11 which are available feature Auto HDR, which offers backwards compatibility support for thousands of titles which don't natively support HDR. If you head down to the Microsoft Store, you can actually download the official Microsoft HDR calibration app for Windows. You can follow all of the on-screen prompts to dial in the settings to make sure they're 100% adjusted for your Windows settings and the display to ensure that you get the best HDR results possible. Just make sure that you do set up your local dimming first, as this will adjust the HDR values in which you're about to put in. Another handy tool when utilizing HDR in Windows 11 is you can make use of Windows, Alt, and B to quickly enable or disable HDR at any time. By absolutely no means HDR is 100% required for this monitor to be impressive, the SDR content experience even on Windows 10 is mind-blowing. With 600 nits peak brightness, to compare this to my previous 4K 144Hz monitor, that had a peak SDR brightness of 250. You can see the sheer difference between these displays in different environments side by side as they are both connected up to the same graphics card with a clone display. On the left is my previous monitor, on the right is the brand new KTC, and you can see how alive the mini LED technology is even in non-HDR content. With the Windows and NVIDIA or AMD Radeon settings set up, when you boot into your game with HDR enabled, there are a few settings you need to make sure that you dial in to get the best results possible. Head into your options menu. Go into video. First of all, make sure that your HDR or high dynamic range setting has been set to either auto or enabled directly in your game. In many newer titles, you'll also have an option to be able to change the HDR TV brightness or HDR bright spot. Inside of this setting, what you then want to do is dial this in for your display. Go through all of the in-game settings and adjust them according to the parameters which are listed on screen, whether it wants you to match the colors, make them slightly darker or slightly lighter on different displays. Once that's been dialed in for your monitor, select back, go back inside of the game, and you'll nearly instantly notice a massive difference to the overall peak brightness inside of your game. A thousand nits peak brightness on a display of 27 inches is going to light up the room when set up correctly. If you're looking to make use of HDR in Warzone 2, first of all, I'd highly recommend navigating into the HDR brightness settings built with inside of the game and dialing these settings in. I would then also recommend heading over to the interface tab to copy the color settings which have been listed on screen now. This doesn't just go for the KTC monitor, this just goes for any HDR experience across the board. You should see a drastic difference to the overall brightness inside of Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, and if you're making use of the local dimming zones on the KTC monitor, you'll see incredible contrast. So with a month of daily driving these monitors under my belt, for my overall impressions, I I'm incredibly impressed. A true HDR 1000 experience is unlike anything I have ever experienced before. Both of these monitors are absolutely outstanding in SDR content when playing some of my favorite games such as Apex Legends and CSGO. Both of the monitors also feature all of the creature comforts in which I've come to love with high resolution displays such as full compatibility with integer scaling on both AMD Radeon and Nvidia GPUs. I personally really like running integer scaling on these panels as it means for any reason if I want to play my game at a lower resolution than either 1440p or 4k I can set my resolution lower and that will be integer scaled back up to the monitor's resolution. It's incredible to see how far monitor technology has come even since 2021, allowing for a truly next generation HDR 4K gaming experience, which for me ticks all of the boxes. And whether you're looking to go for the absolute top tier 4K 160Hz experience, or if you're on a more modest PC and want to prioritize frame rates, or if you're just not fussed about 4K, the M27 T20 compared to my previous 1440p 165Hz display is just in a complete completely different
different league. And I think they are both incredibly well specced and well priced for the target audience, whether it's 1440p 165Hz, or if you want to go fully out and get the 4K 160Hz panel, I think you're getting fantastic value for money. To set up G-Sync properly for an experience like this, make sure that you do enable G-Sync on the display itself, head inside of the Nvidia settings and enable G-Sync. Go over to manage 3D settings, make sure that you have Nvidia G-Sync selected with inside of here. Navigate down to the V-Sync mode, make sure that this has been turned on. You'll then want to navigate up to the low latency mode and set this to ultra. If you're then wanting the smoothest experience possible, implement an FPS cap of 141 FPS or three to four FPS lower than your monitor's maximum refresh rate. This video has been a ton of fun to make. I've loved every second of utilizing these monitors and I'll be continuing to daily drive them moving forward. To get my full seal of approval and I would definitely recommend checking them out if you do have the opportunity to do so. If you're looking to purchase or find out more information regarding either of the KTC monitors or the rest of the KTC product lineup, ranging from budget options all the way up to these brand new cutting edge technology gaming powerhouses, make sure to use my links provided in the description down below. We'll be able to find the M27 P20 Pro 4K display, the M27 T20 1440p 165Hz display, or just to check out the KTC brand to find a product which suits you. And with that, a massive thanks to KTC for reaching out and sponsoring today's video. And if you'd like to see more content, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.